I'm Larry Anglisano reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer here at AirVenture 2024 in Oshkosh. Big news over at the Continental Engine booth is a uh, CD300 Jet A uh, engine with a planned EASA and uh, STC approval in 2025 for the Cessna 206 Station Air. And uh, let's learn a little bit more about this engine. All right, well, you're here with Continental Aerospace Technologies. My name is James Foster, and we're just going to do a quick tour around the CD300 engine here. Um, this is a FADEC controlled 300 horsepower Jet A diesel engine. Um, it is a twin turbo, it has a gear reduction, it has our own proprietary home built constant speed unit on the gearbox, so we don't have an external uh, prop governor. We do have an accessory pad that is an ISO pad that is industry standard, so you can put potentially future accessories on there, like maybe a vacuum pump or potentially a prop and, and prop governor combination if you wanted to. It is a twin turbo, and each turbo is actually controlling the uh, boost pressure in the manifolds for each bank of cylinders, so it is a V6 configuration. It is a FADEX, so a full authority digital engine control engine. It is liquid cooled and it is um, a very efficient engine. We are burning around 10 to 14 gallons an hour. Um, it is a 300 horsepower, but it is 270 horsepower continuous, but it puts out enough foot-pounds of torque to compete with our 300 horsepower plus Avgas engines. Um, we have twin alternators, and what's nice about this particular configuration is not only is one alternator good for driving the electrical um, demands of the aircraft, but we can have a second alternator that in some installations is used to uh, power the air conditioning units, and so you can control the air conditioning on and off by just simply turning your alternators on and off. It is liquid cooled, belt driven, so we have a water pump on the, the back of the engine. This is a high pressure common rail fuel injected system. So we have multiple uh, redundancies in the fuel system. So we have a volume control valve that's controlling the volume of, of fuel that is pumped into the high pressure pump. We have a pressure relief valve or a rail control valve that we're using as a redundant feature to that solenoid valve to control the pressure in the rail, as well as we have a spring in there and this is a fail to run state. So if there is a failure within those previous two valves, you still have this to fail to run and you'll, you'll be able to land under power. So there's a few different features. It's very, there's a low pressure pump here that is feeding our high pressure pump. We have a thermostat for the cooling system. One other advantage of, of this particular engine is that it is not using exhaust for your cabin heat. We use our thermostat and our, our water and use that temperature to control the temperature of the cabin air so you don't have things like carbon monoxide poisoning risks or things like that. Um, so it's a much safer engine to operate. It is full authority digital engine control. We have two fully functioning ECUs, and so there's always going to be that redundancy. If one issue, if an issue arises on one ECU, it will automatically switch to the other ECU to continue the operation of the aircraft. And in a lot of cases, a pilot won't have any idea, any idea performance-wise, other than an indication on the G1000 that there is an issue with one of the ECUs. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what we're looking at as far as this engine goes, and we're looking forward to some of the applications that it will be going in in the future. Go for it. So one of the exciting announcements that we've had at this year's Oshkosh is the announcement by APIS that they're developing an STC for the Cessna 206 aircraft. And one of the exciting things about that for this particular engine flying in that airframe is that airframe is used widely in areas around the world where Avgas is no longer really available. And as a result, going to a Jet A burning engine such as the CD300, these, these operators now have an option to continue to operate those airframes in areas that are not necessarily um, favorable for fuel uh, cost and things like that. So it's going to be a very exciting application uh, to see develop. Um, it's because it's going to open the, the doors for people to continue to operate those workhorse aircraft in areas where it just really isn't uh, feasible anymore with an Avgas fuel. So one of the, other, the only other application we have right now with our OEM Diamond is that we have this engine, the CD300, and the Diamond DA50 aircraft. And we're excited about that. It's been announced for several years already, and we actually have a bunch of them flying already. Um, we're very proud of this engine because it was part of an earth rounding um, project with some gentlemen who flew the DA50 around the world. And this engine flew approximately 275 flight hours without a single engine squawk. So we've already seen early on in its life just the reliability that and the efficiencies that we were getting out of it um, in that application. So if you want to see it in the air and flying it, you need to check out the Diamond DA50.